Dickinson show, but away we go. Bang, zoom, another one for the great one, Reggie Van Gleason. St. Louis Hustler, Lonnie and the Bandits, smoke out the Padres. How sweet it is, a honeymooner suite for Rick at the Kingdom. To the moon, Alice. The Expos rerun the winning script. And Requiem for the heavyweights. Kid Henderson versus Brock and the Babe. So arise from those tawdry meadows. Stop living the life of Riley, Trixie. After all, fat men get no call on This Week in Baseball. on cloud nine. Why, it's the first place California Angels in the American League West against the Milwaukee Brewers, trying to get straight in the East. Game one, Paul Molitor leading off for the Brew Crew against Ken Forsh. A Brewer blast right off the bat. An early evening company for the scoreboard. Credit Monitor with his fifth homer and the game-winning hit. Mr. Whisker, Raleigh Fingers, finished up with his tenth save. By a whisker, naturally. Four to three Brewers. Ah, but upstairs in Anaheim, the Angels have also developed a bullpen. Doug Corbett, formerly of Minnesota, pitched two hitless and scoreless innings in the next game to get his first victory. Credit Luis Sanchez with a hold. Two previous scoreless innings. Someone had to stop the explosive brew crew after it blasted three straight homers in the sixth inning. Cooper. To money. To Thomas. Bye bye, baby. But not the ball game. The Angels scored three in the seventh to tie, and Don Baylor untied it in the eighth inning. A six to five Angel win, thanks to home run number seven for Dangerous Don. His eighth game winning RBI. Game three in glorious Reggie Vision, national TV. Reggie Jackson holding court in the tenth, score tied. Judge and jury watch it closely. And is it out or is he out? Reggie didn't know, neither did the umpire, but no evidence of the ball. So, case dismissed. Jackson's seventh homer and his favorite kind. Filled with sound and fury, victory and suspense. Even better, it gave the Angels a grip on first place and number one in the ratings. Right, Reg? Down in fourth place, the Seattle Mariners were blowing their horns to the tune of a five-game winning streak in eight of nine. The Mariners have provided their share of treats in the kingdom. Six straight hits by Seattle's latest arrival, Rick Sweet, was one treat. Also, 11 late-inning wins and 17 comeback victories drove them bats and domed them. Other goodies? Well, the Mariners took over the league lead in defense. How about that? Seattle picked off three of four victories from Boston, covering the infield like the Dome's own shadow. Up the middle, the Cruisers, shortstop Todd Cruz and Julio Cruz at second, ranged fast and far, as did rookie third baseman Paul Cerna. Though not overloaded with big shots, the Mariners took over the league lead in hits, with Bruce Bakhti closest thing to a big shot, leading the way with an average around 320. 432 with men in scoring position. And that's not all, folks. Behind ace Floyd Bannister, leading the league with 67 strikeouts, Seattle pitchers passed the 300 mark in team strikeouts, more than any club in the major leagues.
finish it off, the inspector, reliever Bill Cottle, leading the league in games finished, plus 37 strikeouts in 34 innings, six wins, seven saves, and a 1.85 ERA. Little wonder the Mariners have been able to coddle up to a winning record. Moving east, the Cleveland Indians got into the pennant flow, spewing forth nine straight wins. Lack of offense may be old hat in Cleveland, but bats are a-popping like Toby Hara with base hits in 44 of 47 games, 71 hits altogether, and a 395 average with 10 homers. Andre Thornton's numbers are just as worthy. 15 homers, 49 RBIs, both league-leading figures. Cleveland's new power craze even affected little Miguel Delaney, who helped beat Lamar Hoyt and the White Sox with a rare home run, the first in three years for Delaney. With Alan Bannister logging a good weekend at the plate, the Tribe swept three straight from Chicago and moved into fourth place in the Eastern Division standings. Actually, the Indians have surprised offensively, but defensively, they've had trouble keeping their feet on the ground. But in the first seven games of the winning streak, Cleveland pitching and defense turned things around allowing less than one and a half earned runs per game. Tribe also brought the werewolf, Lamar Hoyt, down to earth, snapping his two-year, 14-game winning streak behind six-foot-seven Rick Sutcliffe, who, like Hoyt, made a successful move from relieving to starting. And large Lenny Barker shut off the undefeated record of Dennis Lamp, beating the Sox for his sixth win in eight decisions. Should the Indians continue their pitching resurgence, figure them into the action in the American League East. And after a weekend of Minnesota's Homer Domer, factor the New York Yankees back in the action. In a three-game series at the Metrodome, the action was all bizarre. Hey, where's the fly, said Lou Pinella. Upstairs, sweet Lou, in the ointment. And on the fly, Tom Brenanski with an inside to Domer Homer. Baseball bizarre in the Twins' new park. The New York Yankees discovered it right away and took advantage. With Oscar Gamble leading the charge with six homers in 16 games, the Bronx Bombers resurrected their power game with an assist from the Metrodome, where 62 homers had been smashed in 21 games. In their first game there, the Yankees crashed four homers. So did the Twins, but New York came out on top 10 to 5. With every batted ball an adventure, Dave Rigetti figured the only solution was to not let anyone make contact, and the first five Twins didn't. Eight strikeouts altogether, but Rigetti still needed relief. Shane Raleigh picked up his third save and third win while the Yankees won all three games with rallies in the final inning. Never a dull moment in Minnesota. Billy Sample of the Texas Rangers led off a game against Kansas City with his first home run of the year. Later in the game, Sample hit his second homer and Texas won eight to one. Given the sample, can you name the player with the most homers leading off a game in one season? Invest a thought and the dividend should be forthcoming. It was Montreal Expos, defending champs in the National League East. After losing 11 of 15, Montreal got baseball in the right eye, winning eight straight. Andre Dawson seems to be getting his batting eye and power stroke back on the beam as the Hawk ripped two game-winning RBIs in four days. Also on the march with two game winners, Gary Carter. Three home runs in one week raised Carter's season total to 10.
And third baseman Tim Wallach started to tap his power potential, tapping two taters with four RBIs and a 10 to nothing wipeout of Houston. Altogether, six homers this season for the Tim Mann. On the mound, ace Steve Rogers continued to lead Montreal's pitching revival, beating Cincinnati for his seventh win. During the eight-game streak, Expo pitchers allowed less than one earned run per game. Scott Sanderson also defeated the Reds for his fifth win and fifth lifetime against Cincinnati, which has yet to beat him. And one, two, three, look at Mr. Lee. Charlie Lee's two straight shutouts over Houston and 26 consecutive scoreless innings pitched. From Lee to starboard, smooth sailing once again in Montreal. Meanwhile, the St. Louis Cardinals kept cool in the pennant heat and snug in the catbird seat with their fourth straight win, a 5-2 score over San Diego, decided in the late innings and saved by the redoubtable Bruce Souter, his 14th of the year. The Padres then marched back with a ninth inning victory before signaling Cardinal trouble in the series finale where they had the Redbirds looking beaten flat-footed, leading three to nothing in the ninth inning. But St. Louis has more quick feet than flat feet. In the last of the ninth, the Cardinals finally made a move. Just when the Padres looked ready to stop it, they unstopped it. With the score now tied, Dick Williams' objection led to ejection. Nevertheless, San Diego took command again in the 10th as St. Louis lost its grip. Two runs home and a 5-3 Padre lead. Now it's the last of the tenth. George Hendrick on with a two-out single. And Lonnie Smith, the league's top run scorer, the potential tying run and last hope at the plate. Five to four, San Diego. Another last hope, Mike Ramsey filling in at second base. Smith races home. Tie ball game once again. 5-5. Five, five. Now still two outs. Dane Orge, the pinch hitter, runners at second and first. And there it is. A down-to-earth double red bird comeback. Three in the ninth. Three in the tenth. And three and a half up in the National League East. Next, some other races. Batting, RBIs, and home run derby. Pittsburgh's Jason Thompson, a big hit this season. Second in the league with a 354 average and 13 homers. And fourth in RBIs with 36. Jason is after that golden fleece, the triple crown. Pedro Guerrero of the Dodgers is also a strong contender. Guerrero's 322 average, 34 RBIs, and 10 homers had him within the league's top eight in all three departments. And don't forget Keith Moreland of the Cubs, another triple crown possibility with 39 RBIs and a batting average and home run total within the top 10. If anyone should win the triple crown this season, it would be no small feat because only three National League players have ever done it, looking back to 1920. The Roger, Rogers Hornsby of the St. Louis Cardinals did it twice in 1922 and 1925. And he hit over 400 both years, once with 42 homers and 152 RBIs. Numbers worth an extra thousand in those days. In 1933, recently elected Hall of Famer Chuck Klein of the Phillies became the second National Leaguer to win the Triple Crown batting 368 of 28 homers and 120 RBIs.
four years later, in 1937, the Gas House Gang, or St. Louis Cardinals, had the league's last man to do it, Ducky Medwin. A 374 average, 31 homers, 154 RBIs, all Gas House style. 45 years since the National League has had a triple crowner, so good luck. And here's looking at all of you, gentlemen. Bobby Bonds, recently signed by the New York Yankees AAA Farm Club, led off 11 games with homers for the 1973 San Francisco Giants, which was a record for one season. Bond smashed 39 homers altogether that year. He also stole 43 bases. Later, Bobby established a career record of 35 homers leading off ball games. Be they judges or players, check them out. Just ask Alice. Some things are most confusing, like just who does Bill Buckner think he is? Only the Mad Hatter knows for sure. Matter of fact, who knows anything nowadays? Tweedledum? Tweedledee? Tweedledee? Who's he? Great Scott! Or he? Or it? Or any of these whatevers? More and more questions in the wacky world of baseball screwballs. The moon man goes batty. And Yupi goes loopy. Where will they all turn next? A U-turn might be the proper turn here. Sometimes it just doesn't seem to be fair. But all's fair that ends foul in the hands of the performer. Right, pal? Don't worry, folks. He understands even if we don't. And from the far out to the double out. Double thrilling, twin killing. Turn them over, guys. there are more than two ways to double them. For instance, the instant ricochet. The flop bunt. Or the double sacrifice. Out the batter and the runner. All sorts of two out plays. For two, how about three? Well, the Yankees and Twins may have started the first triple play ever without a batted ball. A strikeout, and both runners tried to advance, then retreat, and it was a profusion of confusion. Two outs. Three outs, triple play, and without a batted ball. Of course, Ferguson Jenkins has frustrated many bats, still does, and this strikeout of Gary Templeton was number 3,000 in Fergie's career, only the seventh pitcher to reach that milestone. Now to Dave Kingman, the K of Shea, Shea Stadium in the New York Mets. 14 homers trailed only Dale Murphy for the league lead, and 38 RBIs also near the top, but with a 225 average, Kingman actually had two more RBIs than base hits. How about that? Finally, in search of record-breaking heights, Oakland's Ricky Henderson, recipient of this week's Gillette Special. With 59 walks and 51 games, he threatens Babe Ruth's record of 170. Of course, when Ricky isn't walking, he's running. 
with 51 steals and 51 games. Lou Brock's record of 118 looks shaky. So congratulations, Ricky. And that's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball.